Excuse me, that was a bug that just flew in my mouth. What's good peeps and welcome back to my channel. First off, who are you? <laughs> Today, we are here in sunny Vernon Hills at rust -Oleum Corporation. We're gonna be doing a huge 25 foot mural on this wall celebrating rust -Oleum's 100 year anniversary. We're gonna be going from this to this. Stay tuned to find out how I completed this mural. And to start this project off, we need a really good base for our paint to stick to. So we filled all of the pit holes, all of the cracks, and now we are priming the entire wall. And you can see I'm kind of doing in circle motions and I'm really pushing on the wall because it is a pitted concrete surface. So I'm really trying to fill all of those little pit holes with the primer. So to start planning out this project, I used Adobe Fresco to sketch out the idea for the mural. And this actually really came in handy because things changed a lot over the planning process. And Fresco is great because you can group elements together and move things around so that you can get that perfect final composition. When planning this mural, they asked me to create an explosion of color. And I think we really did accomplish that in the end by incorporating a lot of contrasting colors and extremely bright, vivid colors. It was really important to showcase some of rust -Oleum's accomplishments throughout the years while also keeping this futuristic vibe to show that they are looking forward to the future and what's next to come for innovation. And here I'm just mixing my blue with some white to get the sky color for the gradient and I noticed that it was a little bit too bright of a blue and so I just needed to tone it down with a little bit of black and I need the tiniest bit to make it just a little bit less vibrant. And now this is the most jarring yet satisfying step as an artist is to actually take this white wall and start to put color on it and see things start to take shape for the first step. And I dip into my white and then here I just start to drag that color up to start to create our gradient for the sky. So then I just start kind of pulling that blue down into the white and keep going until you get your gradient. As I'm going, I'll be spraying down the wall just so it doesn't dry up. We're in the scorching sun here, so it does dry pretty fast. But basically, you just have to kind of keep working it into itself until you get that perfect gradient. And it really doesn't need to be perfect. We're going to be putting clouds over this anyway, but you do want a good gradation from the blue to the white at the bottom. And because of that rapid drying process, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to do the whole 25 foot stretch. So I cut it in half and now I'll just start on my other side doing basically the same process, except for now we have to kind of worry about blending it in the center, but it's all good. The clouds will cover the center in the end. And here I'm just roughing in my clouds. Some of this is gonna be covered up by the background anyway, but I don't want there to be any gaps, so I'm starting at the edge and working my way over. I'm not painting these completely white because there's gonna be some blue showing through to make them look a little more realistic. And in the next step, I'm gonna be adding some shadows in to make them look even more realistic and three-dimensional. Now, when I get to the center here, I'm gonna be painting almost all white and I'm doing that on purpose because I know that I'm gonna be putting my title in big red letters here. And so that's gonna help that just kind of stand out and not fade into the blue color in the background. And this is the point in the video where disaster strikes. You see what ha happened was when I uh, finished painting the clouds there, a tar picked up from the wind and knocked over my tripod and completely busted my lens. So I really still want to go over this section and the meaning behind it. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to film the process of painting it, but this is actually one of the most important parts of the painting because it is the first thing you see and it's showcasing Rust-Oleum's vintage Stops Rust packaging, which Stops Rust is an original brand to Rust-Oleum and is world renowned for its rust preventative formula. So I really wanted to showcase that spray paint kind of spraying out and transforming into a vintage wagon. And this is one of my favorite parts of the painting. It's a peacock, which is kind of the mascot for our Modern Masters Metallics brand. And I really wanted this, like you'll see in other parts of the mural to be transforming. So the feathers are actually transforming into paintbrushes and referencing that specific paint brand. And here we are starting up again after that whole uh, lens debacle. And I don't wanna talk about it, but here we are talking about it. 
it's all good. <laughs> um, this happened on a Friday, so I was able to get a new lens over the weekend and restart filming. So a big trend that you'll see is I actually start by just outlining my object in the base color, and then I'll start to go in with the low lights and highlights to really bring out the details. And I'm using this deeper maroon color. Basically, it's just my red base mixed with a little bit of purple to make it more of a shadow color. And then I'll be going in with my highlights and really starting to punch up where these edges would be on the wagon. And it's, it's, it's about to get you, girl. <laughs> So stupid, but no, I did see that spider while I was painting and this wall used to be completely covered in ivy. So I'm kind of in its natural habitat and you know, gotta respect nature. <laughs> now I'm just gonna finish up by painting the hardware on this wagon and then I'm gonna fill in with some detail on the wheels here and we can move on to our next step. And now I'm starting on painting this gallon of paint where it looks like the paint is splashing out and turning into a wave. I love the idea of these regular objects kind of transforming into something else and referring back to paint because Rust-Oleum is a paint company and obviously they have many other products, but I like that idea of transforming and making you do a double take, giving more visual interest. And here I'm just blending out my gradient and the bottom doesn't need to be perfect because we're gonna be putting in a plaid texture anyway. So just adding in the details and kind of cleaning up as I go. And here I'm just starting to make our plaid texture. And so basically I'm just filling in the object again and um, I take my purple and make the low light and then fill it in with a highlight. Now it doesn't need to be perfect because we're gonna be going in with our lines and kind of cleaning things up as we go here. So we're gonna be adding our white lines and then you have your plaid. And I'm just going in and painting the logo. So I started in the middle so that it would be centered. And then when I started on the left side, I actually uh, ended up going over too far, but thankfully the gradient had dried already. So I was able to wash it off and make my logo. And here I'm gonna start to paint the paint that's actually splattering and kind of turning into a wave. So I'm gonna start by filling in with my mid-tone blue here. I'm gonna add in my highlights and then to undercut that, I'm gonna take my deepest blue, which is my shadow color, to really offset that and make that first layer look like it's forward. And then I'm gonna continue that on on the other two layers. So I wanted to keep this clip in real time because you can just see how these subtle little highlights that I put on really start to round out that shape and make it look more three-dimensional. So on this edge here, you can tell it's pretty flat. And then once you just do that crisp little white edge, it actually makes that look like it's rounded out and look like it's more like paint splattering rather than a flat surface. And here I'm gonna start painting our surfer. So I know that yellow paint isn't gonna completely cover. It's always hard to get a one coat coverage yellow paint. So I'm gonna take this white and kind of use it as almost a primer to start doing our surfboard. And then I'm gonna work out from there. This stuff dries really quick, so I'll be able to just do this coat and then a coat of yellow right over it. Now I'll start with the details. I'm gonna fill in the legs here. And it's funny, I basically do a stick figure and then start to fill out the legs so it looks a little more realistic. And same thing with his top half. So just to make sure that I get the most color coverage that I possibly can, I'm gonna to start to paint that white and then fill that in later with the color. And now I'm gonna start on my wave here. So just like my other objects, I'm just gonna start by filling in that background color and then going over with the detail. I really want this to stand out from that blue wave. So I'm making it more of a turquoise color with some seafoam green accents so that it really starts to separate those two objects. And basically the same process with the right side here. The best part about filling this background color in is that I'm actually filling holes as I'm going to. It's not a perfect surface. So this will just help me give a good base for putting my details over and kind of hiding those imperfections. And to give this a little more depth, I'm gonna go in with a navy color and kind of do a dry brushing effect to just make that look a little more three-dimensional and give some contrast. 
And now we're gonna start with our underwater scene here. So I'm gonna be doing a gradient from white to navy. And so to do that, I just start with my mid-tone color here, start to fill in with that white. And then I just drag the two colors into one another, keeping the wall wet as I'm working so that it doesn't dry. And then I'm gonna be bringing in my navy, pulling that color up, blending those two out. And this doesn't need to be perfect because we're gonna be putting a bunch of objects over this. So it'll kind of mesh all those colors together. And I realized I wanted more of a circular radial gradient at the top to look like the sun is piercing through that water. So I'm just starting here by doing a dry brushing effect in round circular motion. And then to make it look a little more realistic, I'm gonna bring in those sun rays that you see when you're underwater. And here I'm just gonna clean up my edges. I really wanted this to look like it was water that was pushing up against a piece of glass. And so I'm just creating that nice clean edge. And then I'm gonna kind of bubble out the surface around the edges to make it look like that water is spraying. And here I'm just putting in the sea floor. So I'm just gonna start with my sand color and then I'm gonna start by doing a gradient of blue so that it looks like that's receding back in space. A lot of this will be covered up, but the two edges that are showing, I wanted to do a white little highlight to look like the light reflecting on the seafloor. And here I'm going to start by sketching out my octopus. So I need this to be completely white so that that orange really pops through and none of the blue is canceling out that bright color. I really wanted this to have a lot of contrast from the background so that it really stands out. This is the center of the painting, so this is kind of like the focal point that your eye will be drawn to. And once I'm happy with the sketch, I'll start to fill in that object with white so that we have a nice base for our color to go over. And now that I've got that object all filled in with white, we're gonna go in with our color here. So I'm starting with orange, using yellow as my highlight and red as the low light so that it really gives that three dimensionality and makes it pop out from the background. And you can see as I go, I'm leaving some sections white. I know that I'm gonna be painting in those tentacle areas with purple later, so I'm trying to think about my steps that are coming ahead here and just trying to plan so that I can kind of save some time and get things finished. And you can see pretty well in this section, I just go over the surface with the orange then I use my highlight, which is the yellow, and then kind of round that surface out with the shadows, which is my red here, so that we get that really nice three-dimensional effect. And now I'm gonna go in and start to fill in those white voids with the purple here. I'm gonna start by painting those tentacles and the suction cupper thingies. <laughs> And as I was painting this, I thought it would be fine, but it's really important as you're painting, especially this big, to take a step back. And it really kind of changes your perspective on things. It looked really dark, almost black. So I wanted it to have a really nice contrast between that purple and the orange. So I added a little bit of white to my mix and it really started to punch up that purple. And I was able to use that really darkest purple as my shadow in the end. And it really did help give some more dimension to this section here. This section really did take a long period of time just because of the big surface area and all the details. So if you guys wanted to see what this video looks like without being sped up, uh, let me know in the comments below. Here you can see just adding those really deep shadows underneath these suction cups here really helped to round out that surface and add just a little extra detail to it to make it really look very three dimensional and kind of adds to the painting itself. Now I'm going in and painting our eyeball here. Originally I was gonna have this as green, but I really liked that color contrast between the orange and the purple being the opposite colors on the color spectrum. So I just wanted to kind of add to that and make everything a little more cohesive. And one thing I really have to remind myself when I am painting this big is that the bigger the surface area that you're painting, the farther away people are gonna be viewing it from. So people aren't gonna be looking at a painting that's 16 inches at the same length that they're gonna be looking at this 25 foot painting. So you really don't wanna be doing too much detail because eventually it's gonna be lost by how far away people are gonna be standing. 
And here's a good detail shot where you can see I'm just filling in the object with that mid-tone color. Then I go in with my highlight and basically just add in my little details here, do a highlight on all of those little suction cuppers, and then do a stroke of white to make that really look like it's shiny and look more three-dimensional. Now here I'm going in and painting an aerosol can and Rust-Oleum, that's kind of their bread and butter. That's what they're known for the most, but they also have cleaning products, wood care, industrial, uh, sandpaper, basically anything you can think of they have. <laughs> but I really wanted to showcase that and I thought it would be kind of kitschy to have the paint be underwater and kind of like with the aerosol, the paint that's shooting out be kind of water bubbles. Thought that would be kind of a quirky, fun little detail. Now to really set these objects in place, I'm going to put some rocks in so that it gives a little bit of foreground and it'll really give that illusion that the octopus is sitting back in space. And now I'm just going to be painting in my anchor here, uh, making sure that all of that white is covered. And here I'm going to add in some plants, uh, some seaweed and some coral to add some color and just give a little bit more detail to this section here. Now after I add these plants in, I actually start to bump up the highlight on the rocks to kind of hide them back and make it look like they're kind of growing out and through the rocks. Now I start here by painting my gallon. It's basically the same thing as the one previous, but um, just on a little bit smaller of a scale. And here I'm going to start by creating my ship. So I did start off by priming the sails with white so that I can really get that color payoff. Then I'm filling in with my color here and I'm gonna start in by painting the boat in red. And then I'm gonna make my shadows in a deep purple color here to give a little bit more contrast and make that shadow really recede back into space. And it's funny, when I interned for Rust-Oleum, I actually created a logo that used a very similar ship to this one for our intern program. So just thought that was kind of funny. Unintentional, but kind of refers back to that logo in the end. And at the top there, I just added the Scottish flag details, referring back to Rust-Oleum's Scottish heritage. So a little bit of a story time here. So 100 years ago, Rust-Oleum was actually founded by accident. So Scottish sea captain Robert Ferguson had actually accidentally spilled fish oil on his boat and noticed that that part did not corrode. So he saw that and used that as a valuable solution, making the stops rust formula, and that was the start. So Rust-Oleum still has this mentality to this day with those innovative type of solutions. And you can see here I'm painting the Rust-Oleum Foursquare logo, which is actually a modern take on plaid, referencing their Scottish roots. Now we're gonna go in and start painting our San Francisco mountains. This is gonna have the Golden Gate Bridge in front of this, and I don't need to be completely perfect with this because a lot of this is actually gonna be covered up by the bridge and the details. So you won't really notice it as much in the end, but I still want it to look pretty realistic. And I'm gonna be creating a space scene to the right of this anyway, but I'm gonna fill it in so that there's no voids. And so I don't need to be perfect about it because it will be covered up by the black. And here I'm filling in that last void of white space. And this is pretty satisfying because that kind of starts to bring everything together and doesn't completely distract your eye. <laughs> this is gonna be kind of a cool chemical kind of feel and it's gonna be kind of about innovation and looking forward to the future and what's to come. So here I'm gonna start by creating our space scene. I really want this to have a nice organic edge so everything flows in together. And you'll see this will really help balance out the mural because there is black on the left side as well. So just really tying everything in together and creating that nice composition. And the next thing we're gonna do here is start to sketch out our astronaut figure. And here we're gonna start by painting our galaxy. So I really liked this idea of the astronaut actually painting the galaxy and it's swirling and getting a little bit bigger. It's almost like it's incorporating into that colorful background to the right there. And so we're gonna finish off our background completely painting this so that it has that nice galaxy feel. And once we start splattering on the white for the stars, it's actually gonna really pull everything together and make it look a lot more realistic in the end. And then I go in with my white to paint the center of the galaxy. And then I'm kind of working my way out, incorporating all those colors back in. And then I'll come back in with my white and start to paint the stars and the things around the galaxy. 
So I just water down some white paint and then I'll start splattering to create my stars, um, adding some detail into those little galaxies there. And I wanted the stars to be a little more uniform, so I just started going around with my small paintbrush and adding some more stars in. And here, just like my other objects, I'm gonna be painting this in white so that I know I have a good base for when I'm putting in my different dimensions and details over the top of this. And now that I've got my base all filled in, basically just making it look more three-dimensional with some shadows and highlights here. And I'll just continue until that astronaut is completely painted. Now that I've got all that detail complete, I'm gonna go in and fill in the astronaut's face mask with black. And then we're gonna go in and work on the details for the hands and add the brush that's painting the galaxy. And here I'm gonna be creating a constellation that looks like the Rust-Oleum corporate office. So it's kind of another tie back to Rust-Oleum and you know, celebrating their 100 years as a company. And then I just go in with my highlights so it looks like glass. And I really wanted to incorporate this space scene and the astronaut and this rocket ship that I'm going to be putting in here because rust has painted for NASA before, another huge accomplishment from them as a company, and I just thought that was another one of those iconic things that rust has accomplished through the years. And another huge accomplishment was rust actually painted the Golden Gate Bridge with their Noxide industrial paint, so I really wanted to incorporate that as well. And here I'm gonna go in with my orange. Um, in reality, I should have painted this white like I did with the other objects first. It would have made my life a lot easier, but <laughs> we just went in with two or three coats of this orange to cover up the background color. And then I'm gonna start in with the details here. Sketching out where those crossbars are gonna be. I don't need to be too perfect about this. We're gonna go in with detail later, but then I'm gonna fill in the bridge again with the mid-tone color. And you'll see that I'm using three different colors, my highlight, mid-tone, and shadow color to give a little bit more dimension to this bridge, making it not look so flat. Then I'll be adding some vertical details here, making sure that the stripes that are closest to us are spaced further apart, and then once it gets further away in the bridge, that they are closer together so that it looks like it's receding back in space. Now I learned my lesson here with not painting white first when I was doing my highlight color. So now I'm just going in with that highlight. And then once that's dry, I'm gonna go in with my lightest orange color. And now I'm just going in with that shadow color so that it really gives that three dimensional feel. And now that the white is dry, going over with the lightest orange. And the final step for this is just to add in my white highlights. And now I'm just gonna be adding in our tension rods here. So I just start with the horizontal ones and then I'll move on to the vertical ones, making sure that again, the ones that are closer to us are spread further apart so that it looks like the bridge is going back in space. And then the rods that are closest to us, I'm gonna add a little white highlight just so that that kind of brings that to the foreground. Now my last step is gonna to be to be adding in the title. So you can kind of see faintly here that I did a charcoal transfer. I printed these letters because I wanted them to be really crisp and nice and then outlined them with charcoal and then put them onto the wall, rubbed it in so that um, there would be a little bit of an outline stamped onto the mural itself so that it acts as a guide because I definitely don't have the best handwriting in the world. <laughs> And here I'm finishing up these letters and I'm really happy with the outcome of these because I wanted them to look really crisp and wanted them to look exactly like what I had pitched on my sketch. And then the last thing to do is sign this mural and then we're complete. Next up, we're gonna see the finished results.
And we're back. Mural is completely finished and I'm extremely happy with the results. Now, thank you guys for watching. And if you could, please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.